a sheet of plexiglass and a black marker pen could just be the solution to improve your free hand drawing skills. Hi, I'm Marion Dutton and in this video I'm going to demonstrate a simple technique that could really help improve your freehand drawing skills. And it will certainly help you to learn how to draw directly onto the canvas in preparation for a painting. Now as well as drawing our image directly onto the canvas, we're also going to do an underpainting at the same time, giving us a solid foundation to create a beautiful painting. Let's begin. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is prepare the canvas and I'm going to put an oil wash over everything. And for that I'm going to go into my lean painting medium and if you're unsure what I mean, do check out my um, video where I cover everything about um, underpainting. So if you do check that video out, it really does go into detail about what this oil wash does. So I'm going to get my oil wash prepared and get my canvas prepared, ready for the drawing side of things. I'm using a sponge to apply the medium to the canvas. And I'm going to put a wash over everything. I'm looking for a nice mid-tone. The, brush I'm, the brushes I'm going to be using for doing the drawing are going to be a um, filbert brush, synthetic filbert brush a bristle brush and a round bristle brush. It really doesn't matter about the brushes, really just for this sketching phase. Okay, so this is the reference photo we're gonna be transferring over. And the tools I'm gonna to be using is a sheet of plexiglass. You could use some acetate paper or something like that, or even tracing paper would work. Anything where you could actually see through or it was um, quite transparent and you were able to see the photograph underneath. And then the other tool I'm going to use is a um, basically a black marker. And this is so that I'm able to block out some of my basic shapes so that I can transfer that image over to my canvas. We're going to be working freehand and this is just a little tool to help you see the basic shapes. So the rules are, whilst I'm plotting these basic shapes, I cannot use any curved lines. They are angles and straight lines only. And we're also not going to use a ruler. We're going to work freehand and we're going to transfer the image that we write onto this um, piece of plexiglass. We're going to transfer that information over to our prepared canvas. So let's begin. So I'm going to describe each of these objects with a simple shape. So we'll start with the tall object first. And basically I'm going to come along and describe that as simply. Now I'm not going around the outside. I am keeping this as absolute simple as possible. So that describes that shape there. So I'm going to do exactly the same with the other objects. I'm not going to try and curve any of my lines. Come to the widest point and describe it with simple straight lines. Or as straight as you can do whilst you're working freehand. Notice how I'm breaking it completely down to the most simplistic shape. And for this demo, I'm not going to worry too much about the beads. We can always add them in later. So that is the most simplistic shapes that we can get from this. So how do we transfer that information to our canvas? Well, the trick is to just completely ignore the photograph. So I'm going to put a sheet of paper right in front 
and that is the image we're going to sketch onto our canvas. So one of the tools I'm going to use is a scale divider. Now what I'm not going to use this for is to measure with this side and transfer it over to this side. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm actually going to do is do comparisons. So I'm going to look at the width, for example, of this shape and see how many times roughly that goes in to that shape. I am just going to use it as a measuring tool and get approximate widths and heights and where items cross. So I'm going to begin with the tallest item and I'm going to use the width of the tallest item to find out how tall that is. So I can use that width and I can count one, two, three, it's approximately four times taller than it is wide. So we can transfer that information over to our prepared canvas. I'm going to apply a little bit of um, burnt umber to my brush. Take most of it off so I've got a nice controlled amount. So I'm going to decide at this point how tall I want the first item and how much space I want around I'm going to come in just around about that much. You'll hear me use that word a lot, about. It's about that big, it's about that wide, because at this early stages we don't need to be too precise. So I want my image to fit somewhere into this section here. So using the information, I'm going to decide my tallest item is going to be about here. And I know that it's, it's four times taller than it is wide. So I'm going to say it's about that wide. I can use that measurement now to go one, two, three, four. And it's going to finish about there. I'm going to transfer that rectangle shape about there. And you'll notice how very, very loose I'm being, not worrying at all about putting the paint on precise. I'm keeping my strokes nice and loose. So going back to our information, I'm looking at where this square um, meets this rectangle. So I'm going to have a look. And I can see it's about the halfway point. So that's a really good piece of information. And I'll, whilst I'm doing it, I'm also going to decide where this book or this rectangle also meets. So if I measure that, and that's about in that final quarter. So again, I'll transfer that information over to the canvas. Looking at my, my rectangle, about the halfway is about there. I'm going to just quickly check that. Yep. Yeah that's about that halfway point. So I know that that square is going to come and in, um, intersect that rectangle at that point. And again, we'll go back to, we know that this width is four times. So if I get that width and come to the bottom, and I know now that the bottom rectangle is going to intersect about there. So I can see that the width of this it's just a little bit longer. So it is a rectangle, not a square, but it's just a little bit longer. And again, I can use that information now to transfer over to the canvas. Let's compare how wide this rectangle is to the one we've got. And they're very similar, that's a little bit shorter. 
So again, I can use that information I can take that width and I know that the other rectangle is just a little bit shorter so if I bring that to there I can use that to get the end of this rectangle. Looking at the reference where this one ends, this one is just a little bit, it's about a tiny little bit longer. So that's giving me a little rough guide there of how that fits in. Let's deal with the other, other rectangle. I'm going to compare it to the one we've already got down. And as you can see, they're very, very similar. What about the height? Practically the same. So that shape and that shape are practically the same. And we can see it just is a little bit into that one and there's a similar gap here as well. So I'm using that information and transferring that over to our canvas. So I know that that shape is going to be the same as this shape. And I know that there's a small gap and that it's going to come just a little bit into that, but it is going to be that in width. And we know it's going to be the same as that in height. See how much easier it is just to transfer boxes over to your canvas. So once I've got all this information in here, the question to ask yourself at this point is, am I happy with how all these squares fit within the canvas? And if you're not, then you would just simply start to erase. You could use a paper towel to remove things and remove lines and change the structure. Overall, I'm happy with how this sits within the space. I have got more space around and a little bit underneath for a table and overall I'm quite happy with how this sits. So once you are happy, you can start really refining the drawing stage. I'm going to remove some of my construction lines. And now we can really start to refine the drawing stages. So for that, I'm going to remove the sheet of paper. And we can really start to detail things a little bit. So again, we're going to stay with straight lines. No curves. Remember, there are no curves. Even if your item that you're transferring is curved. So let's slip that sheet of paper back in and have a look at what we've got. Again, I'm going to just remove a few construction lines so that we can see exactly what each shape is broken down to. Okay, so let's transfer that information over to our canvas. And again, I'm going to use the word about. It's about. Okay, once again, I'm going to remove some of my construction lines. You 
can go back to the sponge and a little bit on by just to remove some of your lines. We'll refine things a little more now. And again with straight lines. So once you get far enough on in your drawing, you're able then to start adding some details in there, some curves and some angles. Try to stay as straight as you can for as long as you can. Before worrying about adding any curves. So now I'm fairly confident with the um, overall structure. I'm quite happy with the placement. So now I'm going to begin doing some reductive drawing. That basically means I'm going to start erasing and then I'm also going to add on with the burnt umber. So I'm going to use a variety of different tools to erase and I'm going to begin adding on uh, burnt tumber for my darker tones and a raise into the white of the canvas and again I cover this complete technique um, in my other video so do check that out um, and I go through all the materials that we do use and I'm going to speed the footage up now so that you're able to see this entire underpainting and drawing develop now I'd like to remind you at this point, if you are getting value from these lessons, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. YouTube rewards channels with high engagement. So let's keep mother algorithm happy and add your comments down below and let me know that you are enjoying this tutorial.
Okay, so this is my finished underpainting drawing and underpainting all done at the same time and of course I need to let this dry before I move on to doing any coloured glazes. Is it an exact replica of the photograph? No, it's not. Am I happy with the painting? Yes, I am. So it's usually at this point that my students will say to me, when it's not exactly like the photo. To which I reply, don't show anybody the photo. I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And again, I will remind you to let me know in the comments below if you are getting value from these lessons. And if you are over on the Mazart Tribe over on Facebook, don't forget to share your versions with me on there. And if you're not a member of the Mazart Tribe, the link is below if you'd like to apply to join this community. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you again in the next video.